So most of you will already know about the Darius video that I made just last week. It has over a million views. I'll let you guys in on a little secret. On YouTube, high elo content, hardly anyone watches it, and it's a lot harder to make. On the other side of the spectrum, the lower elo you go, the more views you're going to get and it's a lot easier to produce. That's just how YouTube works. A good example would be the proudest video that I've made to date. My master's promos video which I spent an entire week gathering footage, scripting, editing and then you have these. The biggest question I got asked in my Darius video was, if a challenger player can lose in bronze 5, then how can a bronze 5 player climb? And to that I say, there is a big difference between people that feed, but they still genuinely want to win. And then there's the ones that want to lose by feeding and hiding from the enemy team afterwards. Now that is actually very rare, and I don't think any of my viewers experience this on a frequent basis. Anyway, the Darius game that I had was an extreme case, and in order to prove it, I've actually made a complete Depths of Bronze to Diamond series. Link is in the description. It actually documents my entire journey where I breeze all the way through bronze and eventually reach diamond without ever encountering this kind of issue. In this series, I also try to be as informative as possible so you as the viewer watching right now can learn exactly why I do the things I do in order to win my games. So be sure to check it out if you're trying to climb for the new season. Before we continue, I want to quickly thank Pro Guides for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for a quick in-depth crash course on specific lanes, matchups, champions, or even League of Legends in general, Pro Guides is a great starting place for new and veteran players looking to improve their game. They even have a feature where you can live chat with Master and Challenger players to have your questions answered immediately. I can safely say that Pro Guides will definitely help you speed up the learning process if you're looking to climb the rank ladder in League of Legends. Link to Pro Guides in the description box below. Oh, wait, this is a kill. Hey, how's it going guys? JC here. By popular demand, we're back in Bronze 5. OP.GG and runes are on the screen right now. Unfortunately, I didn't get top lane, which is my comfort. So we're going mid. Also, there was like a little bit of a skirmish there at mid lane. Not sure why that kill committed so hard. So, you know what? We're going to get an assist right there. And they're late invading. So let's go and help them out. Kind of distracted doing my intro. Oh, wow. Wait, that, that Jin's not gonna move. Oh, she's gonna turn around and bind me. I'll try to flash it. Okay, she's dead. I don't need to flash it anymore. Wow, this is like... Uh, Kindred's gonna need some help. Oh my, the, the Kindred's already threatening to AFK. This is a pretty interesting start on both sides. Even though we got four kills, that Kindra is threatening to AFK. Okay, so because she got the push in, I have to back off. I'm also going for a very aggressive start. Oh, wait, Kindred's coming in. Okay, I'll pop a potion here and try to join in. But I am level one, so she has to start the fight first. Let's go in for. Oh, what? She flashed? Okay. Alright, nice. That works. Wait. Kindred flashed or I might oh wait it's a hex flash? But all I did was I saw a flash. <laughs> the bronze 5 is actually pretty crazy, like all over the place. Just have to adapt to it. But you get fed so easily because everyone's super aggressive. So if you play properly, you're gonna get fed uh, every single time. Also, one thing I want to address about the Darius video, but I'll probably address it a bit later on. For now, I just want to push in. Uh, once I buy items, then I'll talk to you guys about it. So let's get our TMR, and after that, I want to work towards a 30% CDR build because I do have 10% CDR from getting level 10. It's just a personal build that I really like to go, which is go, go Lucidity into PD and then Stinger, then leave it at Stinger until late game, then you go for something else. Then you go for Triforce. So I'm going Boots because it's really good to have Boots against Kale, especially if you can get Swifties. Sometimes you want to get Swifties against Kale. Because once you get that item, she can't escape from you at all. Like, she can kill you and you just, she just can't do anything because you run her down. So that's basically the matchup, at least in top lane. It's very effective in top lane, not so much in mid lane. So I probably won't go for Swifties. Oh. Okay. I mean, I'm not calling for these ganks. Wait, this Vi is so low. Hello? Oh, okay. She probably didn't even try to juke. Uh, this Kindred's coming in, so I guess we'll go super ham. I don't even mind if Kel comes over from lane. 
this E to get the KS. Because my Tiamat Splash wouldn't be enough, and my auto would be too slow before Kindred gets the kill. Okay, I actually have 900 gold, so this is a really good back value. But the thing is, I think it will push in way too fast. Yeah, it's gonna push in too fast. What? This Kindred keeps ganking. <laughs> but you know what? Getting ganks is fine. I guess mid lane is very prone to ganks on both sides. But you have to be careful because your Kindred could rage if you mess up. Oh, I don't. I don't have. I don't have back back. I think I have to warn really early on, or else she would have died. Yeah, I don't have ult. That wasn't gonna be a kill without like one or both of us dying. Just wasn't worth it. But yeah, what I wanted to do at the start, if it wasn't for all this fiesta at the start, I wanted to ward here at a minute twenty. So that gives like really good vision for Vi if she was to red invade or if she was to... Basically I'll be hugging the, like the top side. And it really helps the top laner out as well if I ward there. But with these boots it's going to help out because I'll be able to roam as well once I shove out. This Kindred's like pinging on my way but she's so far away that it's not very helpful. <laughs> like those pings. Okay I have my Conqueror up so... We're good to go. Alright, she flash. Oh wait, she is 6. I think he- yeah, I got the ignite. She should be dead. Alright. Pop another potion and we'll prepare to dive. Okay, oh, what? What's Jin doing here? Can he go back to bottling? <laughs> I mean, I can probably kill- Oh wow, this Jin is so over aggressive. I would like to dive that, but I will definitely die because I might get Jin with ult, but then I think the other person will finish me off or Tao will finish me off. And it's not worth giving a shutdown right now. We can always get free kills later. Let's see if we could get a roam off. I see that Jin is here, so there's nothing to gank at bot lane. Maybe we could gank top. Or scout jungle at the. Or scout her jungle and get some deep vision. As a mid laner, you should always have this warded, like here or here. So this is a good spot, and you could ward here as well. So you have like one side covered and just hug that side. So I'll stack our Conqueror up, and... Oh, maybe they're too mid? What? Some next level strategies. And Kindred's coming in again, okay. I guess we'll zone off Kel. If not, then... Oh, he flashed. Okay, that's fine. So, getting this fed, I'm going to be able to just snowball really hard early, like later on once I get some items. But for now, there's two people mid. So, really just farm under tower until then. Okay, I got the slow off. Hmm, I can't get on anyone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Too hot. Okay. There's three mid now. It's like actually a party. I really want to roam though. If I could shove out, if Jin was actually... If they could get just get tower, we're gonna get bot lane tower for sure because Jin is permanently mid. And maybe Kale is raging or maybe Jin's raging. Someone's raging on their team, basically. This is actually a really bad all-in for me. I don't have my Conqueror up and also she got gap on me after. Oh, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna try to get Vi's red because I don't respect her. Oh, fuck. I thought she backed away completely already. Okay. Alright, we'll get a kill. Like, that looked like... Oh my. Yeah, that's fine if she doesn't come. But that looked like she completely backed away and she was safe. Okay. We have a lot of gold. Let's just back away. Buy our items and we'll come back and we start dominating. Oh, also, I'm going to go for a 30% CDR here. Because we can just afford it. Or, or else I just go straight for PD. So right now, we have 30%. Wait, oh, that's from blue buff. But once I hit level 10, we'll have 30% without blue buff. 
So I want to push out and start roaming because that's what mid laners do to get an edge. But I don't play mid lane at all, just so you guys know. Wait, this is a dead kill. Oh, never mind, didn't get the slow off. If I got the slow off, she's dead. Okay, bot lane eventually got there. But yeah, it was a fiesta at mid. Oh, I get a free red buff here. Get to refresh. Actually, we can three-man top. Yeah, this is gonna be a tower and maybe even a double. And if they try to run, then I'll cut them off. Nice. Alright, we'll just ult to get out. Okay, sweet. So that's a pretty solid roam right there. And then hopefully we can just get top tower. Beautiful. So I guess as mid lane, you just keep roaming. If you see opportunities, roam. But if you're getting pushed in by, say, Jin and, you know, Vi, Kale, obviously you're not going to be able to roam. So now we get Phantom Dancer. We can grab another pink ward. I might place it for Rift Herald. And let's see, Maokai is still at bot lane, that's not very good. The support should always be following the ADC Lux. Um, and they have very even CS, so... That's a bronze special right there. Okay, so next thing we can do is push out mid tower, because we couldn't do it earlier against the ranged champion, but... Should be easier now. Basically getting every objective we can, as fast as we can. And if they have some PS to fight, spin in at the exact same spot as Jin, so that we can land on the same spot after the Blast Cone. Also, Sion is pushing top, so I really want to go top. But the thing is, Urgot already has it. Oh, what? I think my bot lane has this tower, so I can go and help. Oh, never mind. He's running away. I'll get this camp because that tower's already secured. So it just maximizes the efficiency. And then after that, I want to rotate. Because there's nothing to do mid, after... Okay, we can push, but once they come... Like, uh, there's a pretty good chance we're overextending. Okay, everything looks pretty solid right now. I mean, mid lane does have a lot of impact. The moment we roam, we're already impacting like half the map, including our own lane. Oh, let's get a blue buff and then push out bot. Wait, yeah, I played a few games on Trinomir, and they all seem to be... Like, my team was doing well, so I didn't want to upload it, but it's like, this is what, the second or third game in a row that my team did well. There's not really much to it, but yeah, I don't really know what to tell you guys. You can watch my Bronze to Diamond series, and you'll probably have a better sample size. Ooh. He's gonna bind. I walked up, like, a little bit further. Like, in anticipation for that bind. Whoa, why did my character go backwards? Wait, can I win this? She has no ult. No, I can't win this. 100% can't win that. There's three people over there. We just push out. And then, if someone wants to tank the tower for me, I'll dive with them, um, otherwise... The reason why I didn't spin in is if I did, then the tower will aggro onto me, I have no way out unless I flat. Okay, so let's just back away here. We get what we need, and then we'll come back very soon. Oh, okay, she's gonna solo. Nice. Alright, so now I want to just go for either lifesteal or eye edge, and it will round out our build, but the thing is we're probably going to end it really fast because of how we're pushing and trying to end the game really fast, not like, say, the regular bronze games or silver games where it goes for 30, 40, 50 minutes. The way I'm doing it is I'm always looking to take towers, always looking to take jungle camps, trying to keep up in farm, 
and you're always going to have short games if you do that. If just one person on either team, so it could be you right now that's watching, if you play a split pusher, a damage dealer, anyone that's good at taking towers, and you're always objective focused, you have good CS, you have a good KDA in lane, and you're playing properly, then you're going to just close out games really fast for your team. Like, it's not going to be guaranteed every single game, but most of the games. Oh, this Jin's like walking up for no reason. So yeah, I feel as Trindamir, like the past few games I've played in Bronze Zelo, I keep ending the game way too quickly. And I try to get a longer game where my team tries to feed, but uh, it's just not happening. I just end the game a bit too fast, so I'll just have this one to show you guys. But I can very consistently end the game quickly uh, as Trindamir. And you guys can just copy me, so whatever I do, I'll try to explain as much as I can. The more videos you watch from me, the more you'll hear me explain, and you might see a trend, and you can apply it to your own games. Try to get out of bronze very easily like that. Okay, I walked into that one. I can spin out of this one. Looks like they're ending through mid, but I'm just having fun. Whoa, she flashed into me. I'll take out this tower, and then after that, buy some items. I already can afford my Eye Edge. I also have 30% CDR, so it means my spin is off cooldown very often, so there's my ult and everything. It just feels very, very good on Trindamir. So if you can get away with doing that, and it's not expensive either. If you think about it, Zerka Greaves costs 1100, and it gives 35%, and it gives 35% attack speed, just like how Stinger costs the same. And this Stinger also gives 10% CDR, so if you look at Zerkas, see how it costs 1100, 35% attack speed, so it's exactly the same, it's not actually expensive at all. So you can implement it into your build. You can also go for a lifesteal. So now we hit really hard, we have 100% crit, we have lifesteal, we have 30% CDR, and it's not even 20 minutes. In your bronze games, if you play proper, like, just try to focus up for the very first or second kill, You'll be able to snowball off of that, but you just have to be very patient in lane. Know your matchup, know your power spikes, and do well. So, the best thing I should be doing, obviously go top because, you know, these are all pushing. But you expect that these guys don't all in and, you know, die. So, that's just basically what you do, is you just have maximum efficiency. Always be farming lanes that don't have someone already in it, so that your whole team as a whole gets more experience, more gold push in more towers, and then eventually, once you push your lane, then you go and roam. Push your lane, take towers, or roam, or take jungle camps, but you're always pushing. So that's the idea, to end the game really fast, and if you get me to play another 5 games, it'll probably end this quickly as well, because that's what happened, I keep trying to get footage for you guys, like longer games, but I just can't. So hopefully this one will do, and yeah, if you want, make sure you subscribe, or watch my Bronze to Diamond series, and I show a lot more of this as well. So yeah, as you guys can see, I actually have the most gold by a lot on both teams, so it really shows that how rich I am even though I don't exactly have the most kills, like Kindred has the most kills, but yet I have way more gold than everyone else by a landslide, so it really shows through the macro play and just getting gold is going to be the more consistent way to win your games. So hopefully you found this video helpful and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Cheers. It has over a one billion gajillion fifillion shabadoo million shiny gosh million yes